Thanks, Jen. So what Diane showed was how to create and edit forms online. And the other option that she introduced was how you can create forms with Excel. So for this, you have two options. Either you can start creating your form online, like Diane showed, and then download the form in XLS format, and then edit it in Excel, which we're going to talk about right now. Or you can create your form in Excel from scratch um, if you don't have any internet connection and you're an expert, for example. And we'll talk about this later. So then I think you need to click to, yeah. So you would have the options on, on the Kobo platform to download the form you want to, to edit in Excel. So one of the main advantages of using Excel to create a survey form is that you have access to a lot of advanced features that you can only set up in Excel. We've listed a few here and added links throughout for online resources that you can use to guide you. Um, but these are just uh, a subset. This is just a subset. So you can set up Cascade. It's back to the first. I'm still on that slide, Diane. The one with the advanced features. Yeah, thanks. So you can set up cascade selections, which is when you want certain response options to be displayed depending on the response to a previous question. So this is really handy when you fill a form. You can set up your form in as many languages as you'd like. You can add pretty complex constraints to responses. For example, when you have multiple choices questions, you can prevent some responses from being selected together depending on what makes sense for that particular question, which is very handy. You can set the number of times you want a group of questions to be repeated if you set your form to do that. And you can add images or other media alongside response options to make data collection easier. So you can use the link provided at the bottom of the slide to learn more about XLS form features. Um, there's, a, there's a lot available, which is great. So when you have a form, an XLS form in Excel, your file has three tabs. One is survey, one is settings, and one is choices. And all forms need these. So you need to keep these exact tab names. In the survey type tab, you have your list of survey questions. So one row is one question. And the columns are question features, which we'll go over in a minute. Then in the choices tab, you have your response options. So it's quite similar. One row is one response option. And the columns are your response option features. So the list name here that you can see in this example is country is what links a survey question to its response options. So if in the survey tab, the question type is select one country, like in this example, then in the choices tab, the countries that can be selected as a response have to be listed in a list called country. This way, the form can match the response options to the question. And then you have the settings type tab, which is uh, useful if you want to set a default language, for example, and if you want to assign a title to the form to be displayed at the top of the form when the surveyor opens it. So as, as I said earlier, the columns in the survey tab are question features. So I'm only going to going to present the main ones here, but there are additional ones you can use. So the name is the name of the variable that will be created to contain the data from that question. The type is the type of question it is. So Diane gave the example of a select one question in her example earlier. 
the label is the way the question will be displayed on the form. And obviously this is probably the key part because if your label isn't clear, the enumerator won't collect good quality data. So if you have a form in only one language, you only need your column to be called label or small caps. But if you have several languages, like in the example shown on the screen now, you would need to add two columns and then the language name. Then you can add hints to guide the enumerator. And same thing, if your form is in only one language, you just have one column named hint. And if it's in several languages, you would add the two columns and the language names. Then required is if you want to make it mandatory to answer this question or not. So if you type true, it will be mandatory. And if you leave that cell empty, or if you type false, then the enumerator can skip it and continue to the next question. Relevant is the condition for the question to appear. So what Diane described as a skip logic earlier. Appearance is how the question or the response choices are going to be displayed in the survey form. And constraint is the validation criteria that Diane talked about earlier. Okay, so now over to the types of questions. Um, they're fairly intuitive. Um, but feel free to ask questions in the chat. So the one called integer is to enter integer values. So 1, 10, 200, and so on. Decimal are decimal numbers, 1.5, 10.6, for example. Text is free text. You can type whatever you want. Select one is uh, when you want one response option to be selected from a list of choices. Select multiple is if you want to enable multiple response options to be selected from a list of choices. GeoPoint is where your form would record a location GPS coordinates. And then dates would obviously be the date. It would show up as a calendar where you can select the date. So if you're working on a form that you initially created on Kobo online and then downloaded as an XLS form, you will then need to upload the form that you've edited in Excel back onto the online Kobo account. So you would do this by clicking on the spinning arrows and then uh, finding the right form in your files and clicking redeploy since you started the... Uh, someone is saying my voice goes really low sometimes. Can you check your mic? Um, sorry about that. That might have to do with the internet connection. Um, if it goes low sometimes, I'll try to speak louder. But let me know if it doesn't re re resolve the issue. Sorry. Okay. okay. Next, please. Thanks. So now you can also create a new form in Excel from scratch. So you would click new on the home page of Kobo Toolbox on, on your online account and select upload an XLS form rather than build from scratch, which Diane demonstrated earlier. And then you would locate the form that you've edited in Excel. You would locate this in your file, files and upload it onto Kobo and then click deploy and the form will be ready for data collection. Okay, 
So a few tips um, before you start a survey from scratch, it's good practice to check if uh, maybe a similar survey already exists or the exact same one if you're real lucky and are implementing a standard survey. Um, there are templates available on the public consortia library in Kobo Toolbox. Um, so this will be filled up uh, progressively as time goes. So that, that should be very handy. And if you can't find what you want, you can also contact the consortia group and inquire. And lastly, um, when you work in XLS, you will make mistakes and you should always check your forms using the link provided at the bottom of the slide. It will tell you where your form has errors uh, and what they are, and then you can work on Excel to correct them, re-upload on this website to check them again until everything's good. And now a few form management tips that then introduced earlier. You should never ever delete a form that has data in it. If the survey is finished and you're not going to collect more data, you should archive it. You should also never change data column names, so variable names or question types after data collection has started because this will erase the previous data that was collected with the old names or old question types. And lastly, whether you work on Excel or on the online Toolbox platform, you should always test your form from start to finish many times before actual data collection starts to make sure it runs smoothly and as planned.